Hello, my front end friends. If you've ever been following a tutorial or maybe even reading some docs and you saw something like this come up where you had to go into your command line to write some code and it scared you a little bit or you got a little bit lost, well, you're in the right place because today we're gonna be breaking down how to get started using NPM and sort of the, 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 the essentials that you need early on. And the very first thing you're going to need to do is to actually install it, <laughs> like I just said. And to do that, you're gonna go to nodejs.org and you're gonna click this download Node.js right here. And you might be saying, I don't want Node.js, I want NPM, but NPM stands for Node Package Manager. So this is what you wanna get and it comes bundled with NPM. So once you click that, it's gonna give you a little installer that's going to look just like this. It's one of those little installation wizards. You just click next, make sure you accept the terms of the agreement tell it where you want to install it. I would say that on this one, you want to have all of these on. Then after that, if you're on Windows, you're going to have this option where it's talking about an installation, other installation tools for chocolatey. You definitely don't need this for a lot of the stuff that you might be doing early on, but I would encourage you to do it anyway, because every now and then you might need something with it or way down the road, you will. And then at least you already have it installed on your computer. Uh, after that, we can hit next once again, and then you just hit the nice little install button and you're ready to go. Uh, it's going to go through an installation process process and then it's just going to be done. There's no programs to open or other things to do. It's just in your system now and it's something that you can use. And so since we don't have like an app to open or something else like that, how do we actually use NPM now? And you have to do that in the world of the command line, which looks something like this. If you're as old as me, you might be familiar with this from the days of DOS. Uh, but if not, don't worry too much about it. I'm on Windows, so I'm using command prompt. You could also use PowerShell if you wanted to, but command prompt is perfectly fine. The newest version of it even has color themes and other stuff. It, it's pretty good. And if you're on a Mac, I would just use terminal instead. Both of these come pre-installed on your computer. There are other ones that are out there that you can go that are fancier features and other stuff that you can download. Hyper is one on Windows that I quite like, uh, but you really don't need them for just the quick things that we're going to be looking at in this video. So the first thing we can see here is where I am and I'm in my my user folder uh, right there. And I wanna get to my desktop. And for most of you, the desktop will just be a CD and then desktop like that. And it brings you to the desktop of your computer. And the CD here just stands for change directory. So we're saying change directory desktop and it brings me to my desktop. It cannot go to the desktop if I'm somewhere else. So just as an example of that, we can also go steps back. So I can do CD dot dot and it will go one step back. And on my desktop, I have a demos folder. So I can't say demos. It's gonna say that it can't find that because in this user folder, there is no demos. So I'd have to do CD space and then uh, desktop forward slash demos. And then when I do that, it will bring me into my demos folder. You'll also notice I am on Windows where they use backslashes to do your folder structure. On if you're on a Mac, it would be forward slashes. But when you're CDing and moving around, you can use the forward slash, there's no issues. I'm gonna go back again. So once again, CD dot dot, that brings me back one step. Now, most of the time I work off of my desktop and then I move projects around from there when they're not active anymore or I have my demos folder and other stuff like that. But sometimes you might have a folder on your computer that you need to get to that's like more hidden away and it's really annoying to like type in the entire path. So at least in command prompt on Windows, it's the, oh, I'm not sure about how this works on terminal and it doesn't work in hyper uh, if I remember correctly. But if you wanna get to somewhere, what you can actually do is do CD space and then you can bring the folder <laughs> in that you wanna go to. So in this case, you can see I'm actually like going pretty far and deep in. This is for my Conquering Responsive Layouts course. I can grab that folder and just drop it here and it's actually gonna paste the entire thing that I want. I can just hit return and it's going to bring me there. Uh, so we can do that actually now. And you can see that it, it brings me to exactly where I want to go. Uh, so it's a faster way sometimes to get to some folders that are nested away somewhere deep. Uh, and then if I want, I can also just do a CD and a forward slash, and that's gonna bring me back to my root directory of my C right there. So very quickly, we can go over my users, kapow, and go back to my desktop where I want to be for the rest of this demo. Now, one thing you can do from here uh, to start a new project is actually do an NPM init. And you're gonna see that, I'm not, don't do this right now uh, if you're following along, but this would initialize something with NPM. So we're starting a new NPM project. But most of the time that you're gonna be using NPM, you're going to be using something, whether it's React, whether it might just be something with Vite, it might be an Astro Project, Svelte Kit, I don't know what you're doing, uh, but you're usually gonna have something. So I'm gonna do something, just a simple, one with Vite, but uh, the steps we're going through and everything we're going to look at here are going to work with whatever it is that you're installing. So I'm going to do an NPM 
and then I'm going to create. And this is where sometimes it's a little bit different, but look at the docs for whatever it is that you're trying to install. And we're going to be using Vite, so it's Vite at latest. Uh, I could hit return now, and it would go through the process of what I'm doing, but I'm going to put a space here and put my project name. So let's just do npm for beginners, but put whatever project name you want here. And what this project name is going to be is actually the folder that it's going to create on the desktop. And anytime you have an npm create with something, that's basically how it's going to work. So we're going to hit return here. And what this is going to do is it's going to ask me a few things to select a framework. And this is because I'm using Vite. If you're using other tools, you'll have different options here. You just go through the different options that it's asking you for. Even if you just did an npm init, it's going to ask you for the project name and a few other things along the way as well. So let's just say we're actually going to do a Svelte project right here. Uh, let's use just regular JavaScript for it. And it's done. <laughs> Look at that, done. Now it wants me to do a CD npm for beginners. So it tells me the steps. Generally, most of these uh, tools do that now. And then you can see an npm install and an npm run dev. I'm going to talk about those in a second, but let's do the CD npm for beginners first. And that brings me to that folder. And then instead of working in here, what I'm actually going to do is write code dot. And this is going to work if you have VS Code installed on your computer. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to open VS Code from based on that folder uh, right here. So I can bring this in. Let me just make it a little bit bigger. And there we go. VS Code is ready to go. Uh, and there's a few important things when we're in here, when we start a new project. But one of them is if you're in VS Code and you do a view, and then you can come down to terminal, and that's actually going to open the same type of thing down here inside of VS Code. So you could work from here completely if you want to. The nice thing of doing it if you've already opened your project in VS Code is it's opening it the, from that folder right here. So you don't have to navigate anywhere after that. The other way you can do that is with a control back tick is the shortcut for that. So to open and close it that way. And right before we go in, the, it didn't mention doing an NPM install, right? And it looks a bit weird because it's breaking across a few lines. But in when we were in that last step, it said to do an NPM install, which we definitely want to do. But before we do that, I want to explain what that's actually doing. And to do that, we're going to look at this package.json file. And anytime we use npm, you're going to get this package.json file. And if we come and take a look in here, you can see we have the name, which is the name we gave it. So if ever you wanted to change, you could. Uh, is it private or public? Uh, the version of it. So maybe this could be 8.1 <laughs> that you can, you know, give it whatever version you want. But what's really important here is the dev dependencies and the scripts. These are the ones that are the you sort of want to focus on the most. The scripts are different commands that you can tell npm to do, and it's going to do whatever it says here. And with Vite, we don't have anything too complicated. It's very easy. Um, but most of the ones you're going to have are always going to be a dev, a build, a preview, and then sometimes you also have some other options. And because they all use the same dev, build, preview, it makes it very easy to remember whether you're using Vite or you're doing something with Astro or you're doing something with React, whatever it is, you're probably going to be using those. And we'll see how they work in a second. And then the other thing here is these dev dependencies. Dev dependencies are things that we need in our project for the development side of things. So in this case, I said we're going to be using Svelte, so it brought in Svelte, and we're using Vite, so Vite is right there. And when we do an npm install, what it's doing is it's going to install these into our project. So right now you can see here on the side, I have my public, a source, and then some other files right here. And after I do an npm install, which depending on the project and what you're installing, this can sometimes take five seconds and sometimes can take minutes to do. <laughs> it can be quite long. It depends on how heavy the thing is that you're installing. But once it's done installing, you'll get a little message here. It installed 37 packages and three of them are looking for funding. So if ever you want to help fund packages, but it added 37 packages to my project. And it did that in this node modules that we see right here. And if I open that, here's all the different things that got added to my project. And you'll be going, well, wait, why is it adding 37? I only needed three. I only needed Vite, Svelte, and the Svelte Vite plugin for Svelte here. So I only needed three. Why is it installing 37? And it's because these packages rely on other packages. And so a lot of the time, even though you might only be bringing in one, you're actually getting a whole bunch of other packages along the way as well. 
And we're gonna talk a little bit about version control um, in not too long from now. And when that's sort of what this is all going to come into, because we're setting up the project and then we need to install all of these packages. And this is what allows us to know what packages we're actually installing. Uh, so we've already installed everything we wanted, but then maybe you're working on your project and you realize you need something else. For example, let's say we were doing this as a blog. And on our blog, we need code snippets and we want some uh, syntax highlighting. So one popular tool for that is called prism.js. So I'm gonna do an npm install prism.js and I'm gonna hit return. And what's interesting with this is it's going to install it. It's gonna add it to our node modules, does it all behind the scenes. But now inside of my package.json file, I have a dependency section where it says prism.js right there. And you might be saying, wait, why are these dev dependencies? And this is a dependency. So anything that's listed as a dev dependency is something that you need for development purposes and not something that's actually going to be like shipped to the website once the website is live. Whereas dependencies are things that you need on your actual website that just help it do whatever it is your website is doing. In this case, uh, high syntax highlighting for code snippets. As an example for something that would be a dev dependency, that would be something like Cypress, which is a testing library, because if you're testing things, you don't need to be shipping those tests to the finished website. It's something that you'd be doing in the development process of your website. And for this, this is something that would just be a dev dependency. And you'll notice here when I look at the docs for Cypress, it's actually adding this hyphen hyphen save dev, and we can make that a little bit bigger. So it's telling us how we can install it right there. And when you see the hyphen hyphen like this, it's called a flag. And a flag is basically like an option that you can add. So we're installing it and then we're using the save dev option is a simple way to look at that. So if I take that and with the save dev flag, what that's going to do is save it as a dev dependency. So I'm gonna add that to my project now, Cypress save dev. And now that that's done here, my package.json file, we can see it has added Cypress to the list right there as a dev dependency. And you might be wondering, how do I know if I need that save dev or not? Most of the time when you're looking at the docs of something, uh, when you're, you know, you're looking for something to install, it's going to be like this, where it's actually going to show you that you should be using the save dev. And you might also see sometimes where it just shows a save flag and that's just making sure that it does get added to your package.json as a dependency, though these days the default is to do that already, so you don't need to worry about that, uh, whether you include it or not, but the save dev flag is there for when you need it to be a dev dependency. And again, most of the time the docs will say which one it should be. And the reason why all of this is happening, we have all of these packages is because, as I said, sometimes these packages can be quite heavy. Uh, we're probably up to a lot more things now. Right? We're up to 42, uh, we're up to, well, that Cypress added a lot, 171. So we have a lot of stuff in this node modules now that's coming in here. And when you have a project that you're finished with and you wanna take it off your computer or you're working on it with a team of people or you have it on your computer and your laptop or whatever it is, you're probably gonna be using some sort of version control like GitHub to have you know keep track of your project and have everything there. And node modules is one of the things that you're usually going to see in a git ignore file like we can see right there. So when this gets uploaded to GitHub or whatever you're using for your version control, it's not gonna include the node modules because that's a a whole bunch of extra stuff for it to have to upload that we don't actually need there because the project is aware of everything it needs. So if ever you're getting a project from, a, you know, you find a GitHub repo and you're bringing in the project to work on it, whether you're forking something, you're working on your own thing, you're doing a contribution for open source, something like that. It just means after you get it from there, the first thing you're probably going to do is just to come in and do an NPM I, and the spacing and everything here is weird probably because I'm so zoomed in, I don't know. But you do an NPM or it'd be install. You can also just put I for install as well. Hit return and it's going to install all of those, pack, uh, all of those node modules that you need for your project. And then after that, you're finally ready to go. I said we're gonna talk about it. We have the NPM and then I'm gonna write run and run is telling it I want to do a certain script. What script do I want to do? Probably my dev. So I'm going to do dev and that's going to run the dev script, which in this case is just Vite, and that's going to get Vite going so I can hit return on there and we're going to see that it launches up my dev server for me. So if you have other scripts that you want to be able to do, it's always going to be npm run and then the name of the script that's in your list there and it's going to run that script. One other really fast thing, I'm gonna do control C just to terminate the job, probably a command C if you're on a Mac. 
Uh, and the other thing I want to look at is sometimes you might have an MPX instead of an MPM. You'll see commands that say MPX, uh, and you, you know you'll be looking through the docs, and it says to use that instead. Do what it says. Uh, but basically, MPX is a way for it to execute something immediately. It's basically running a program or running something. And so if you see MPX or MPM, they're both using Node Package Manager in one way. Just one is to sort of manage the projects. You're installing new files or installing new packages or whatever it is. And the MPX is going to be executing that thing directly when you do it. So just so you know the difference between the two of them right there. And if you're looking for something to use Node Package Manager for, Astro is currently what I use to build most of my projects out. And it's really fantastic. It uses Vite under the hood, uh, but it does a lot more and it's just really good at static site generator out of the box, a lot more options available. And I talked about it in this video that's right here if you want to see how you can get started with it. And with that, I'd like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Philip, Simon, and Tim, as well as all of my other patrons and channel members. Thank you very much for listening. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.